Hey there, welcome to the Intentional Academy podcast, where we believe that life is best when it is lived on purpose. If you want help finding time for what matters most, launching your dream career, and building a prosperous future, then you should visit us at intentionalacademy.com. I'm your host, Tony Farrar, joined by your co-host, Justin Thomas, and we are thrilled that you're tuning in today. Hey there, Justin. Hey, Tony. How's it going? Doing great. Today, we are addressing a concern from one of the students in our Bypass the Machine workshop who says, I have a job lined up. And they're telling me to start remotely. I have no idea how to work remotely because I've never had to do that before. To help answer this question, we have a special guest today, Melanie Breeze. Melanie is an engineering student from Philadelphia. (laughs) Check that. (laughs) As of last week, Melanie is no longer an engineering student because she is a graduating member of the 2020 class. Congrats, Melanie. Thank you. Melanie's also been working an internship and will transition to full-time this summer As someone with part-time experience at her employer, both in the office and remotely, she's got an insider view on what it might look like to work inside her organization. So she's going to be sharing how we can bridge the gap and get yourself set up for success as a new hire, even if that's going to be remotely. Before we get to that, just wanted to let you know this episode is sponsored by our free guide, the Ultimate Career Builders Starter Kit. I know many of you are thinking, gee, I'd love to have the problem of worrying about how to start working remotely, but I don't even have an offer. The challenge is getting the right attention as you network and applying to jobs online, both of which can be difficult, especially these days. So we created a system that helps you build your image, connect with potential employers, and land a job you love by standing out as an engaged professional. I know you're worried that you won't find anything in this market, so let us help. Head over to the show notes for today's episode at intentionalacademy.com slash eight to claim your free copy and start building the confidence you need to network your way into your dream job, intentionalacademy.com slash eight. By the way, we are gearing up for a new round of our career development course in June. That's the Bypass the Machine workshop. You should go grab the guide because we're going to give folks who do an exclusive deal. Okay, Melanie. So you have that job offer. Congratulations. That was the hard part. But you're being forced to start remotely because of this 2020 coronavirus lockdown situation. So what can you do to start off on the right foot? Like I said, we, we wanted to congratulate you on you know getting that job, that first hurdle out of the way, but now it's come get your computer and go home. You have work to do. <laughs> so I actually was having um, a dream about starting work last night. Um, didn't go so well, but I think that's just nerves talking. I think to get off on the right foot, you want to go in with a positive attitude. Of course, the situation is not ideal, but you do have a good, you do have a job lined up and they're ready to work with you to help you do your best. I can feel for a lot of people here because starting a new job is scary in the best of situations. And this isn't really that, right? I mean, you're dealing with new bosses and colleagues and and all this stuff. I love your message there of going in with a positive attitude because I think I think mindset has so much to do with how your experience and what your outcome is going to be. Yeah, and then going to work into a physical environment helps build interpersonal relationships with your colleagues, and it'll be interesting to see the dynamic of how that has that has to change because we're being forced to not be in. A, like a cohabitational area with these colleagues. So it, it that that's an interesting dynamic that I don't know anybody can really correctly answer that question yet, but it would be very interesting to hear. Uh, I think at least I'm fortunate where I am already familiar with my team. Um, but we have been using a lot of online tools such as Skype with a whiteboard. Uh, another thing you might want to keep in mind is that they probably are prepared to meet this challenge and that they'll hopefully have some kind of buddy system in place for you. Someone who can be your point person and maybe direct you to the right people to talk to when you have questions. I feel like that's definitely a must. Somebody that you can easily go to with those one-off questions that you don't necessarily feel need to be directed to your boss who you might feel is the only person you know that you can ask that question to if you haven't built those relationships like you said you have so it would be that that mentor that that buddy that's a very good idea I like that I think one of the challenges that we're going to run into is that so much of what happens relationally at work is the spontaneous 
But now we're in a situation where every communication happens because it was a scheduled, deliberate thing. Like, do you feel like there's going to be the the water cooler talk or or, or a way of kind of replicating that now that we've moved online rather than every time we connect, it's because we have an agenda and a purpose behind this digital meeting. So for me, it's pretty easy to send an instant message to someone and just, just to check up on them and say, hi, how are you doing? But I know that'll be a little harder to do as far as like, if you don't already know people within the organization, I think if you maybe be reached out to someone first via email or something like that and then said, hey, can we chat over Skype or whatever similar system you might be using uh, Slack or Discord or whatever. I know there's some organizations that have institution and instituted social um, events, things like that, like uh, Zoom happy hours or uh, things like that, where it, it, it tries to get involvement with the with the team but in a uh, less formal setting or without an agenda like tony was saying yeah i'd say maybe two things to think about there first if they're not already doing it encourage them to create a casual channel Mm -hmm. in whatever platform they're using a a place to post memes and links to youtube videos and and goof around with each other a little bit Uh, i did that in my classes when we moved them online and they're the most used channels Right, I've got a, a thing about how to ask for homework questions, and nobody's ever in there. They're just off doing their homework. But the the meme channel is blowing up, you know. And so I think some sort of a we called it the lounge, right? And people are just talking about whatever they're doing to entertain themselves. I said two things. What was my second thing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, ha! Huh. Remember to ask questions. You have the benefit of being new there. And a work-related question is a great excuse to get live conversation with a new colleague. And don't downplay the importance of the small talk, small talk at the beginning and end of that. Absolutely. I know um, one thing that I struggled with when I first started my internship with this organization was it took a little bit of time for me to gear up to asking questions when I needed help because I've always been pretty self-sufficient. But you have to kind of be willing to recognize that you're struggling and that you do need that extra help. And then you can't just come to someone and say, Hey, help me with this. You got to do that small talk. And that's a great place to start building a relationship with someone. When you're, when you're in a digital setting and not even with video, I mean, with, you know, you can look and see what somebody's doing when you're having those conversations, but say I send an email to somebody that I would usually look over a cue ball or something and just ask them the question it's weird that you have to change that mindset that I'm not going to instantly get that answer. And I have to sort of hang back and wait for them and whatever is going on in their lives and their work day to get back to me. So that's definitely an adjustment too, is the, the, the timing on how uh, information flows when it's needed. That just kind of triggered something in I've been thinking about, and that is the importance of creating some sort of a system for keeping track of your information. There is so much now that it used to be communicated did you know by by talking to each other and we now are going to be bombarded with text communication and probably need to come up with some sort of a system for which of these are things that I can just watch scroll by and which aren't and how am I going to keep my to-do list straight and things like that and a lot of that are things that you deal with anytime you go to work that affects me personally Ugh. because I'm one of those, I can't have an unread email. I don't like the little red marker on the phone for a message and things like that. I'm always more apt to make a phone call than to send an email. So getting the ding, ding message, email, bing, bing, it, that overwhelms me at times because I know it's like, okay, I got to look at this. What was that? What was it? And it's a lot of times it's, it's, it's trash or it's spam or it's somebody just saying, Hey, what's up? But I have to look at it. It's one of those trigger things for me. So not being able to just look at you and talk or make a phone call and get my point across is is new. And it's I, it's making me definitely reassess how I deal with digital media and conversation. So I go the exact opposite direction. I just turn all those badges and notifications off and I dip in when I want to hear about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> 
you're uh, that guy. What, what's well, I don't know. What does remote work life balance look like? How is that different? It it doesn't from... exist. Yeah. <laughs> I have a eight month old and a five year old, and my wife is a full time professional as well. So we are a engineer contracts daycare diner drive-ins and dives you know like (laughs) (laughs) so mel what advice do you have for a new hire that has to start remotely so as i said earlier definitely ask questions you would have to do this in person anyway to tackle some of your more challenging tasks or something you might not be familiar with Uh, working remotely definitely is going to make this more challenging i think the difficulty is going to be getting technical details across without face-to-face. And then that's where you really got to use the tools you have, such as like, so I've said before, I use Skype. That has a whiteboard function. Zoom has annotations. Um, If you don't have something like that, maybe shared documents. We use a lot of shared documents across my organization. I also find it really helpful to keep track of how I approach each task, because a lot of times maybe I'll forget as I'm going. And then I go to explain it to someone and I'm like, oh no, how did I do this? And it could have been something that I just missed and didn't have written down. So um, I either use PowerPoint so I can uh, include screenshots of models I'm working on, or sometimes I use Microsoft Word. But I mean, either way, whatever works best for you. Do you feel like people are being pretty responsive to answering questions? I mean, that can be intimidating for somebody who's new to a group. In my experience, they've been pretty responsive. Um, It is a little changed. Uh, It has changed a little bit since we began doing mostly remote work. There's a lot more lag within communication because as you said, again, people are doing, you know, there isn't much of a work-life balance for a lot of people now. They're kind of maybe watching a kid or something like that at the same time as their work. So it might take them longer to get to your question versus If I were in person, I'd just go to this person's desk, right, and Hmm. chat with them. So I think it's not so much that it's that people aren't good at responding. It's just you have to be a little bit more patient. It makes me think that it's going to affect how we prioritize our to-do list each day. You might want to stack the things that you're more likely to have a question on early so that once you've asked your question, you're not just shut down. Right. If you if you start the day with all the little to dos that are easy to check off the list because you know you can do them solo, you're gonna run into this problem where now okay now I'm working on my big project. It's two o'clock in the afternoon and I'm stuck. So I ask my question. Now what do I do? Total my thumbs, go play video games, and then I get stuck working in the evening because they finally answered me at four thirty when they checked their email. So I've absolutely had that happen. Um, one of the <laughs> before I um, pulled back my hours a little bit so I could finish off my semester. I was working on a, on some projects and I was just like, I hit those points where I was like, oh, I need a que- need an answer to this question. And, oh, right, this person may have already gone home because people, def- well, gone home in quotes because people have, because they're able to work flexible work hours. So they may already have been done for the day or they might be busy in meetings or whatever the case may be so then you hit that spot and you're like oh no now what and that that's definitely something that's happened to me so yeah i do think we should remind people though that when you first start this kind of a job it might be really different if if this is an internship or a full-time position it might and it's your first one this is going to be a lot different than other jobs you've had um you know, most of the, the hourly type work that we do in our lives leading up to this, whether it's working in a grocery store or changing oil or waiting tables, those are three positions I held. They more or less expect results from you by the end of your first shift, right? You're going to wait a table today. You're going to vacuum a car or change the oil or you're, you're going to do the work. And when it comes to starting in, stepping into a, a full-time position, there's a lot more startup training videos and documents and forms to fill out and clicking through things. So give yourself a little bit of a break. You're not going to be expected to design a new jet engine on day one. Absolutely. Since this is basically my third time coming back to this organization, 
I, my experience is they give you usually at least a couple weeks to get ramped up before they really expect you to be giving any kind of results. And even then, you know, if you're in conversations with your manager or whoever your stakeholder might be, they're usually pretty lenient and they're willing to help you out when you need help. The good ones, at least. Right. Justin, that reminds me, you know, we were talking offline that, you know, you've, you've changed several times all within the Navy, but you've, you've changed positions. And we were talking about how important it is to get clarity from your boss on, on expectations. Maybe you want to tell people about that a little. Um, start asking about, you know, clear expectations, roles and responsibilities, the, the things that you will be expected to provide regularly, the people that you're expected to interface with regularly, uh, the, the, uh, the people in maybe you're in, entering a leadership role. So understanding who is, uh, is part of your team, who, um, whose work are you responsible for ultimately, um, it, any and all questions with regards to the expectations of you as an employee with regards to the job statement that they've given you. Clarity is key and it helps you execute to your highest standard possible because you understand exactly what they think they are expecting of you. Yeah, I think that's a big challenge, right? A lot of us are going to be transitioning out of a phase of life where every expectation is clearly given. They tell us more or less what we need to be doing all day, whether it's at work or as a student. And now we're moving into positions where people are a little bit more self-managed. I've got bigger goals that have been communicated, and it's time to get that work done, but I kind of have to figure out the order. It's not like the boss says, okay, well, from 9.30 to 10, you work on this, and then 11 to noon, this is your job, and you know, it's a little bit more complex. Yep, there's a lot more initiative expected. That should be a good thing, because that allows you to create your own time management methods, your own methods of uh, of how you want to generate your work, how quickly you want to generate your work, how you interface with other people, how you communicate that I'm busy and that I can get back to you later. That that That's a big one. Hmm. You know, a lot of people feel like they have to be open to to any communication that comes their way at any time, and you don't. So I wonder if maybe this is just being more intentional about using status, right? The difference between being green or away or do not disturb like maybe you need to start using those intentionally throughout the workday and it's probably okay to set some of your day aside for the deep work and not be interrupted by ims and things that go ding silence your phone you know yeah set your status to away or do not disturb or you know anything like that that would distract you out of your that whatever you have to work on that takes real focus. So Melanie's coming at this from a little bit of an ad, an advantage. You had worked in this group before and now you're going to transition to full time. And so do you think there's anything that interns should be thinking about specifically? I mean, they're on a shorter time scale, right? We've got 10, 12 weeks usually for a summer internship and then back to school what do you do if you are interning remotely that could still move your career forward, build that experience, the stuff that's going to go on your resume? So I think if you're doing an intern experience remotely or in person, you want to make the most of it and learn as much as you can while you're there. As you said, it's a very short term. So you have to, again, ask questions. Um, for me, I would especially... I would suggest especially paying attention to what measures your organization has made in reaction to the pandemic. I think that's a pretty good indication of the company culture. Like what have they done to ease the transition of remote work or if they're in a position to help, are they doing it? What are they doing it? Because this is going to tell you really, I think if this is an organization organization that you feel good working for, I've also heard from some mentors that internships are basically a two way street. So it's a summer, a summer long interview of you, but also for the organization you're working for. So you can find out if it's a good fit. I love that because I think so many people show up to an internship thinking that it's all about them proving themselves and needing to impress. And I love that you're shifting it the other direction and saying, no, 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 I'm test driving you too. <laughs> and finding out, is this the kind of place I want to be 
for my career. That that's so cool. That's so good. Yeah. So again, my first internship here actually was with a different business area and it wasn't a good fit for me for the work. The cultural fit was good. So I was getting really frustrated because I was like, I'm not sure I can really deliver because I'm having a lot of difficulty here. And then when I confided this to my mentor, that's what they told me is it's like a two way street. Again, you know, you're interviewing them. Definitely. Yeah. You, you want to make sure that not only um, are you outputting your best for them and learning as much as you can, but that you feel like that fulfillment in your life is they're providing that as well. Um, the only thing I would add to that is don't necessarily just focus on your, the, you, you put your blinders on and you're, you're focused on the tasks that you're given, you know, go ask to shadow, go ask other people what they do, understand how each parts of the business works, um, get an understanding of, of the total operation. Who knows? You might find something at that business that interests you more that you didn't even know was available. And then you could say, hey, I'm interested in coming back. What about me going over here and checking this out? I mean, this could be not only an internship, it could turn into a full-time thing. If it's an early internship, you could be coming back the next summer to do or over the winter and do something. So there may be more within that organization as well. And that's basically how it happened for me was, again, I didn't really like the work I was doing, but I was asking questions and saying, hey, what else could I be doing rather than this? But I like the company. I want to come back. But this looks like it's more my speed. That's so cool. And by the way, kudos. I don't know if most people in internships would be, I don't know if Braves were quite the right. Yeah. I don't know if they'd be brave enough to tell their boss, hey, I like it here, but I don't like my job. <laughs> You'd be surprised if 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 an employer sh knows that y you are, you know, a, a worthy addition to the organization, how willing they are to keep you because they they see value added by you as a person and not necessarily what you were doing. So go out, do your best. You were hired for a role, fulfill it to as much as possible with enthusiasm. If it's not for you, there are constructive ways of going about saying, hey, what about, or hey, what do you think about this? You know, don't be afraid. And that is very difficult. Just like asking questions when you become vulnerable because you don't know. So if I had to say one thing, it would just be, you can do this. And really what I would focus on is getting comfortable communicating online. This is the world we live in now. And people don't feel as natural on a video call as they do face-to-face. -face. Uh, we tend to write unclearly if we're in a hurry, and now we have to do a lot more written communication. And so that's two things I would focus on right now is getting natural feeling. You just, just practice talking on video calls and work on communicating concisely but clearly as well. So I would say we're all in this together. Um, your new core workers, mentors, managers, they've all had to adjust to working remotely within the past couple months too, or they're already familiar with it. Reach out for them for tips or for help and voice your concerns if you have any. Um, sometimes it's a little hard too when you're meeting new people. So there's also the Intentional Academy community if you're not comfortable talking to people from work. <laughs> it's um, obviously not ideal, but you can do it. Yeah, by the way, you can join us at the Intentional Academy community. If you go to intentionalacademy.com slash community, we can we connect. We, we talk to each other on a daily basis uh, just to share words of wisdom, encouragement, problem solve, all that kind of stuff. If the coronavirus lockdown is forcing you to start your new full-time job or internship remotely, what you should do is focus on the long game. This is going to be just a very brief period of your overall career. So what you want to do is find ways to build relationships with your colleagues and remember to just start by asking lots of questions. I think I heard that more than anything else as we talk through this. They are the doorway to establishing new relationships with your colleagues and they give you the opportunity to make sure that you're starting off on the right foot. 
no doubt this has taken a lot of fun out of internships, full-time jobs. Logistics are a hassle. It's harder than ever to communicate with each other. Hang in there. Take it one day at a time. Don't be afraid to ask for help. I'd like to take a few minutes to thank Melanie in particular for joining us today. Melanie is an aerospace engineer for one of the biggest players in the industry. Along with that, she's very passionate about driving innovation through aerospace projects that actually inspire change. She's an engineer. She's an advocate. She's an artist. She's constantly working to balance the scales of diversity and inclusion. She supports STEM initiatives for young girls and minorities. <laughs> Melanie, what does is, what is that equity mission mean to you? I did not even know what an engineer was until about six or seven years ago. I grew up, didn't really have a lot of STEM people in my family, or I mean, not even in my family, but just around me. My exposure to math and science was just the teachers I had in like middle school and high school. I'm also a first gen student and I really, really want to be the role model I never really had and show like other people like me that this could be their future. So they're not spending, oh, seven years trying to figure out their life. <laughs> hear that so where could they find out more about you if they'd like to connect um they can go to my website melaniebreeze.com which i which i set up with help from the bypass machine and then there's also links on there to all my social media melanie you went through our bypass the machine program and we're just wondering if there's anything specific that you learned during that course that aided in your job search your transition things you wish you knew I think the biggest thing, my biggest takeaway from Bypass the Machine is how to leverage your social media for your career purposes rather than just for, you know, hanging out or browsing for your interests and using that to connect with uh, other professionals. Yeah, I think that's an area that we don't generally assume to go, right? We, we view our social media as really separate from, and by the way, you're killing it. You the, the stuff you share is so cool. Um, your, your website's really awesome. The the blogs are so insightful and deep, but also playful. And I just, I love it. I love it. MelanieBreeze.com. You gotta go check that out. We'll put a link in the show notes. I can't wait. I know we're going to be begging you to come back and help us unpack even more of this. In the meanwhile, you can tune in next week where we're going to be talking about student loans. For Boo. many of us, these are... <laughs> Uh, for many of us, these are a responsibility and a reality that must be faced. How much do you owe? When do you have to start paying? How much do you have to pay? When do you actually pay them? And how do you send them the actual check? We're going to talk about all of the details next week. In the meanwhile, one of the best things you can do is focus on building professional relationships online, whether that's because you're a new hire or you're hoping to be one. Here at the Intentional Academy, we love to show people how to do that, and you can get started with our free guide, the Ultimate Career Builder Starter Kit. This is a PDF download that will get you started with the Intentional Academy system for building your image, connecting with employers, and landing a job you love. It starts with downloading the guide in today's show notes at intentionalacademy.com slash eight and using it to make the three key decisions to get moving. Intentionalacademy.com slash eight is in the number of this, our eighth episode intentionalacademy.com slash eight. And as always, this show is here to support you. If you have a question that you'd like to have us answer on podcast or uh, any any other way, uh, social media, head over to intentionalacademy.com slash podcast and send us a message. If you found value in this episode, leave us a review on whatever podcast app that you're uh, listening to us on. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything because we uh, share bonus episodes with our subscribers that you won't hear about any other way. And lastly, if you found value in this episode or you know somebody who could use it, please share it with them. Thanks. One more time, I just want to say thanks in particular to Melanie. You rock. Thank you for giving us this time. Yes, thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, that's all for now. Have a great week, everybody. Yeah, have a good one. Have a good one.